This episode of First Look by Ghost Sports is brought to you by pbswagbag.com, providing you with fresh assorted paintball products shipped right to your door every month. The products change every month and come from some of the top brands in the industry like Raza, GI, Exalt, Dye, and more. Make sure you subscribe today at pbswagbag.com. GI Sports, makers of the greatest paintballs on the planet, be sure to check out their new Level Loader, now being sported by the top teams in the world. MyFanWagon.com, live daily fantasy leagues all at your fingertips. Head over to the App Store and download the latest version of the app and get started on the NXL Texas Fantasy Picks. We're giving away $1,000 and the new Empire Vanquish GT to our members, along with great sponsored prizes such as DLX, Lux, the SP Shocker, and tons and tons of amazing other prizes. Also, FanWagon is the stat provider for the NXL. <laughs> Welcome to episode I don't know with Steve Rabakov, Virginia. We're here. Another episode, legendary home. Tell me about all of the J Rap beatdowns that went down in here. A lot of J Rap and B Rap beatdowns at this house. This house had a lot of escape routes, so um, especially out that backyard right there. But yeah, a lot of beatdowns here, but it, were, it all worked out. Yeah, they're all good kids. <clears throat> We are now two weeks post NXL Texas, uh, sorry, NXL Vegas. Tell me how the event went down. You can put on your NXL hat and tell me, how did the NXL go down? First event of the year, what did you think of the first event? Uh, Vegas went down like this. There were 172 teams total, more than there was last, the year before. We lost some five-man teams, but we gained X-Ball teams. So the X-Ball is growing because if you take the regional leagues throughout the United States from NEPL, Foxball, MSXL, USXBL, WCPPL, uh, and, and so on. There's so many leagues out there. I think that that is so strong right now regionally that mm-hmm. it, for the National League, National Expo League, it's even stronger. So uh, I really enjoyed walking through the divisionals. I don't know if you ever got to get out there much, but the enthusiasm and, and the teams out there and the, the screaming, the yelling, the arguing, mm-hmm. it, it was all going down there, and it was, it was good. What did you do about the layout of the event? Because there was no complaints about the layout. When uh, every event last year, people were like, oh, the layout, the layout. Like, well, how did it set up? I don't know what the difference was. I think certain people that are taking more instructions from other <laughs> players, basically, they're, they're taking more advice. Mm-hmm. And that's what you need. You need everybody to have a little bit of say in, in, the, in the layouts. And that's what they did. And it was a great layout. Favorite matches? Ooh. The quarterfinals were ridiculous. Yeah, the quarterfinals were Some ridiculous. of the best paintball I've ever watched. Like, Damage played Dynasty in the quarterfinals. And Damage played really well that whole event. And they're getting better because they got a lot of new pickups as well. And they're getting better each event. D- Dynasty, um, obviously, they won the event. They lost some players. Oliver didn't play. Mm-hmm. They lose Dalton. They come out and they win the event. So I don't think a lot of people expected that. But, hey, they're one of the greatest teams of all time, if not. Uh, let's see, X Factor, they played amazing the whole event. Man, like you said, there were so many good quarterfinal matches that it was it was good. Let's talk about the infamous AC match. Oh, that wow. was one of the greatest comebacks in paintball history. Yeah, 5-0. At 5-0, I think all of us looked around and were like, this game is just about over. over. There, we, there was just yeah. about a mercy rule there. And something happened. Either Infamous got too cocky on their side, or AC decided they didn't want to get beat up. Or both. Or both. And then what happened is, as AC started getting points back, Infamous started having doubts in their mind. And then as the, the game was going, you could see when they were getting shot on the break, their heads were down. And once your head is down, I don't care what team you are, you're done. Mm-hmm. And I think a few guys on the Infamous side got a little too cocky as the game was going, just from what I was watching. And as it started to turn, the confidence on the AC side just just went at another level. And then when they tied that game, I think AC was were like, wow, we just tied the game. We could win this. And, and Infamous were probably like, we were just up 5-0, getting ready to mercy rule these guys. What happened? And, mm-hmm. and it all just fell to pieces right there for them. And then AC moves on to the next round and ran into Dynasty. And, and I think Dynasty just had more experience. And I think AC was just tapped out at that point. I mean, they, they, they went out there and played, and they played a great event. Yeah. I just think Dynasty had the experience. Yeah. 
It's interesting watching Brad with AC. I got to go to a couple of their practices. How do you think they're molding together with, with Brad's kind of infamous attitude, well, infamous history, bringing it into the AC fold? You know, when, when he first made the announcement that he was going to the team, I didn't know how it was going to work out because he, he came from an organization that has this mental attitude mm -hmm. where AC is still trying to figure out where they are in this whole pro division. And I think looking at it, obviously, after Vegas, he's fitting in with that team quite well. And I think he's excited because those kids just want to win. They just want to do everything they can to get to that next level. The Jackson brothers, those guys sleep, eat, drink, paintball. Yeah. TJ Danner, Stevens, Greg Pauly, the coach, they all probably dream about paintball and think about paintball way more than a lot of other people. <laughs> yeah, they have a store, they're yeah. always at the field. Yeah, and they're, they're, they travel all over Texas. Mm -hmm. They're really into it. So, mm -hmm. it, and, and it's great for teams like AC, Boom, Thunder, Uprising, where they came through the divisions. Katana, they, and, and for all the teams that are listening to this, watching this, if you're a divisional team and you have a goal of getting the pro division, you can do it. It just takes hard work, mm -hmm. and and you got to work through all the ups and downs, people recruiting your players, because that's just the way it is. It's been this way for 25 years. This yeah. is my 25th year in paintball, and the progression, like when I got in, the Ironmen, which I can still consider one of the best teams in paintball ever, the original Ironmen, and then you had Aftershock, they're amazing. All Americans, UK Predators, then Avalanche. Then it went to Avalanche, the team I was on. We went on a three or four year run. Again, for people that are new to paintball, what I call the keyboard warriors, <laughs> um, people say all oh, the best team money can buy. Well, Avalanche, Ed Portman put the best team money could buy at the time. Yeah. Rocky Cagnoni, Chris Lasoya, John Richardson, Steve Rabikov, Jeremy Salm, just we had players. They were superstars then. And then and jumped into Dynasty. Dynasty was starting to evolve. And then Dynasty just went out of tear and destroyed everybody for years. And then Excessive, another team that were made up of superstars. And just because you put a team together with superstars doesn't mean you're going to win. It takes time. Right. To, 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 and you still have to take those super egos and put them together. And then we went into Infamous went out of tear for a little bit. And then the Russian Legion was a superstar team. Built of Russians, they built through the, the core, but then they brought on players like Dave Baines, Justin Rabikoff, uh, legendary Zalo. Yeah, uh, just there's so many players that, that came through the Russian Legion organization that it's it, every there's teams they are made up of superstars, and now we're seeing that right now with Impact. Yeah, they're made up of amazing paintball players from all organizations. Look, they came a lot of those guys are out of the aftermath organization out of San Diego. So, to the keyboard warriors back home, wherever you are, <laughs> you know what, they still got to go out there and play. But this is what's been going on. This I site. think with the respect of, of the keyboard warriors, it, look, championship level teams will always be hated because people like to see the underdog win. Yep. Everyone does. Yep. When, when the Patriots are in the Super Bowl, you, every, every single fan, even Patriots fan, has a little corner of their heart saying, I kind of want the other guys to win. Absolutely. Right? So when Impact's in the finals for the last six events, seven events, however many it is, uh, just in the NXL, don't even take it in the Millennium. Millennium, they've been booed in the finals for the last year, two years. Yeah. But now we're seeing this this bad guy, this evil empire. That's team. what it is, and, and that's what, when teams, yeah. whoever they are, and they've all figured it out. Once you're there, the, the first couple of years we went to the Millennium with Avalanche, they loved us there. They would take pictures with our team before we would play. Yeah. The third and fourth year, they booed us every match that we played, every point sure. that we played. So you just have to understand. You have to play your best game every game because everybody wants to destroy you. And that's mm -hmm. just the way it is. And guess what? Too bad, so sad. Whoever those t top teams are, deal with it. Yeah. Whoever you are. And now Dynasty just won going into Texas. So they're the team to beat. They're the best team in the NXL. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Finals match, Dynasty versus Impact. Amazing game. Just Amazing game. The way you want to see a final game, back and forth. Dynasty comes out, takes a 2-0 two, two lead. Impact comes storming back. And it just went back and forth, and it was an amazing game. And and I think... 4-3. Four, 4-3. Three. Four, three. How did it fall apart? Let's start with how did it fall apart for Impact? Uh, from what I watched, again, I watched it from the sidelines. I wasn't in there. Huddle. Huddle. Yeah. I don't know what went down, but from what I watched, I think they gave up the middle of the field, which is their strongest part. I agree. And I think Dynasty just, with A-Rod, just absolutely attacked them and just mm -hmm. made it uncomfortable for them so 
Dynasty figured out in that match what to do to really disrupt impact and and they they played great and they deserved it and, and well uh, like well deserved and an amazing win you know ryan greenspan was really doing something from the corner coming out with 44 kills out of 47 points played a huge kp ratio 936 almost a 1.0 kd nick laval again up top was their main killer 52. he was the kill count leader by a huge margin and he didn't do what got him there yep and that's what you're saying, is they gave up the center. Yeah, and I'm not picking on any one player. They, mm -hmm. it, Dynasty capitalized and said, hey, if we take out and put the pressure on impact in the middle mm -hmm. and take that out of the game, we can make this game close. Mm -hmm. And they, they kept it close, like took the lead, impact came back, but they just ran out of time. And that play that A-Rod did at the end of the game, that yeah. was just phenomenal. Like, that's, phenomenal or luck, what would you, what would you call it? Uh, a little bit of both. I would say skill. Because you got to have the balls to, to, to run and do that. And there's very few players that would, would do that, and he's one of them. And it, it was just watching it, yeah. it was, you're like, wow. If you watch it, and we watched it a couple times in replay, the moment he made the move from the W to their tower was the only time he could have done it, and he did it perfect. The only time he could have looked right and shot J-Rab, Nick Laval, was the time he looked. And the only time he could have continued down the field and yeah. not gotten shot and to do when it, he did it, and, and he, and, and JC think, dove into the snake, head down. You know, not his, not to his fault. He could have looked up at any point and shot him before he hit the buzzer, and maybe the time could have run out. I don't know, but you need it was like, crazy. like Matt Marshall said, to win events, you need skill mm -hmm. and you need luck. Yeah, he has the skill and he had luck going that day. And I think a lot of people watching that probably said, "Oh, this game's going to go to overtime." Mm -hmm. But Dynasty said, "We're not playing for overtime." and we're, we're down, a, we're down a body, mm -hmm. we're going for it, and they did. And that's what made that even more amazing. So from a fan watching from the sidelines, mm -hmm. paintball, that was an amazing finals game. And I think going into Dallas, looking here, looks like Dynasty's playing X Factor the first game. You're playing X Factor in Texas, so yeah. you know X Factor will have a lot of fans out there. And then in their bracket is Damage, TMG, and PC Katana. So not an easy bracket because... You just don't know what you're running into with damage right now, especially. Team G is a wild card because they're starting to play with, we know we're not at the, the, the top tier yet, mm -hmm. but we're going to come at you every point, and that's a problem for a lot of teams. I can't. That makes it frustrating, so you never know what you're going to do. And PC Katana, look, they got their first win in their first NXL Pro Division match. Why don't you take some of these teams? Who did they beat? They, they won 6-5, and they beat... Out. It was boom. You're right. It yeah. was boom. So, and then look at boom, beats Dynasty in the prelims. Yeah. So they went two and two in their bracket with the Russian Legion, and just a, f a few points here and there, they could have made Sunday. So if you take teams like Boom, TMG, Uprising, Shock, and sh look at Shock, they have five players that have never played in the Pro Division. Their team just gets d dismantled during the off season. Everyone thinks Shock is done. But they bring probably the most exciting growth for a team. They almost performed exactly how they would have with their old team, right? Yeah. What you'd expect. Three yeah. and one, but all close matches, some overtimers, and then, you know, the performers, which were like, you know, Nick Slowiak coming and they, out. Who they just added the weekend prior. He just got to practice with them because he was up in the air on where yeah. he was playing. And then he and it was rocky. You could tell, like, they had some, some difficulty in the pits. And I Nick, Nick was frustrated because he really... You know, he saw the growth potential in that team and was crazy. Those guys are actually really good. Those are the distortion guys, right? Uh, some like uh, some a of mix them of them. But yeah. again, what can Bruno and that five five guys never played a pro pro match move up and then yeah. they go you know two one and matches. three. Yeah, and they went four and three against uh, I think it was Infamous. Uh, they lost by one point. The other two matches were within two. I mean, yeah. it, it's interesting to see where shock could unfold and it's same with with uprising they're just a few mental mistakes away from making sunday as as thunder look at thunder's games they're all within a point or two and they're just again mental mistakes and i'm sure rocky if he sees the, not rocky Corey, my bad I'm yeah thinking, totally apologize fields, Corey, yeah, Corey fields. Corey field. don't call him and, fields. and, and upset. yeah and, and the thunder crew they they're just a few mis mental mistakes from making sunday and, and yeah. Corey said it even during the game that i was watching so they, That's got to be frustrating, man. They've, they've been that team on the cusp of Sunday performers for a while now. It's going to happen. 
it'll yeah. happen. And then look at the Iron Man. They made a lot, a lot of major pickups. And it'll just be a matter of time because Coach Todd Martinez will get that team turned around. They do have a, a good core players that know how to win with Greg Sewers. And I feel like they had a really tough bracket, too. They did have a tough bracket. And, and again, they probably, in their minds, didn't perform the way they expected. I thought they would have done a little bit better. But, hey, that's mm-hmm. paintball. That's pro paintball. That now going into Dallas, they have AC, Russian Legion, Ironman, and Revo in their bracket. So it's another – that bracket – is a tough bracket, and they're playing AC in, in Dallas. They're mm-hmm. gonna have a lot of their their fans there and their friends, so it'll be an interesting. Uh, Texas will definitely be interesting. Let's talk about a few things before we really dive into the brackets. Three new major rule changes in the NXL. How did the consumer base and the players take the new chin strap rule? Real quick. Well, <laughs> wow. Going into the NXL, they all lost their minds and the world was coming to a complete end yeah. that they were going to have to wear a chin strap. So you weren't around when we went from goggles to earpieces. <laughs> and <laughs> it goes to show you how long I've been doing this. And then everyone was like, we're done. This mm-hmm. this is terrible. Then they made us wear a full face mask and then the world was coming to an end. And then you put them on and you, forget, you forgot. You just played. I went to the NXL. Everybody wore their chin straps, and they played paintball. They forgot about it. And then last weekend, I was at the USXBL Great Plains Open that we just started in, in that region in Missouri, and players put them on. You could see that they weren't really excited about it, but once they put it on, they started playing, they forgot about it. Right. And, and I think that people just made a bigger deal than it really is. Yeah. So the, the alternative is, like, look what happened to Trevor Reeser. Thank God nothing happened. And, and, and one guy said to me, well, just putting on this goggle strap doesn't mean that that's going to not protect me well. Sure, that's naive, though. It, I mean, you're definitely going to get, uh, you know, better odds of no, <laughs> no injuries. You know what? When I, when I go ride my bike on the road, I put my helmet on. Right. Now, well, I'm not thrilled about it, but I put it on and I put my goggle strap on and I forget about it. Yeah. So Second major rule change. Uh, well, it's not major, but I like it. The pink color. The NXL is now restricting paint color what was the reasoning and and well i think it's easier for if you listen to all the guys doing video Mm -hmm. and then especially for the webcast you could see the paint a lot of a lot of people have never watched paintball including some of my family members are like i can't even see the paint Mm -hmm. like what's going on paintball is very difficult to film it's probably the most expensive sport to film Mm -hmm. you have to have a lot of cameras a lot of different angles and a lot of the players out there will even complain hey you're not covering enough here you're not covering Mm -hmm. enough over here and it just depends on how the layout. Every lay, every event, one event time, the Doritos on the the, the show side, then the snake. So it's it's very difficult to film paintball, and I think that's one of the reasons why. Third major rule change, and this is a hot topic. You guys were definitely put on blast for this <laughs> with the refing at NXL uh, Vegas. The argument was that the refing was inconsistent, and. One of the ways the professionals in other sports managed to keep consistency with the help of technology was the replay rule. Correct. Look at NFL, they have the replay challenge. Look at tennis, they have the replay challenge Correct. where you know they use technology to see where the serve hit and right. they can call an overrule or, or so right. on. What, what, how did that conversation unfold when it happened? I think re- we did use replay mm-hmm. in, in Vegas. We did. Uh, and it worked. Look, remember, we've never had replay. So, as the league is evolving, how do you evolve with technology? Well, we brought in replay, and a lot of players and teams are like, "Well, we need more replay." Well, could you imagine if in the NFL you're allowed one challenge per half, right? Right. Well, a lot of guys are like, "We need more." Well, we can't do that. We'll never finish the, the tournament. Yeah. So, replay was brought in, and it did work. But I, I, again. A lot of guys felt it should have been used more, mm-hmm. but you can't use it every single time. It's in certain situations. So we'll take what we learned from here, from Vegas, and keep evolving and make it better f- for the rest of the year and into the future. So it's hard. And until you've refed a tournament at your local level, at your regional level, at a national level, try to get out there for 12 hours, get shot to pieces all day, get yeah. yelled at all day. It's, it's a difficult job. And paintball is not like basketball or football listen i watch a lot of sports i'm sure you watch a lot of sports we see calls blown in the nfl we see calls blown in the nba i just watched one the other day 
it happens, but we're trying to fix it. Mm-hmm. And th- this weekend going to, te- to Texas for the USXBL, I already know there's going to be good calls and bad calls. Hopefully those teams get more good calls than bad calls, but if a team says we lost a tournament because the refs, my suggestion is, and the same thing I'm going to tell teams this weekend, beat the team with the guns fast enough, the guys standing there can't make those mistakes. When you put those games into those last 30 seconds or last minute, mm-hmm. Things are going to get weird sometimes. And that's just unfortunately because two teams are colliding and these guys are trying to make the right calls as fast as they can. And it's a difficult yeah. thing. So I mean, Matty Marshall always said it really well. It's this paintball is the most difficult sport to officiate. You got to look at the statistics here. You have 10 guys on the field shooting thousands of paintballs per minute. And there will be 10 <laughs> or 20, you know, marks at some point during a point times however many points that are played, yeah. times however many matches that are played in the day, times the days in the tournament. Yeah. And at every single point, if a single call is blown and a red flag is thrown up, all the eyes which are scattered across the field are now going to that one place. Why did that guy get a major penalty? Why did this guy not get a major penalty? And so on. And, 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 what, and teams want consistency. That's what they yeah. want. And they deserve that. So that's what it has to be worked on. How does it make it consistent? If this guy's going to get a penalty for doing this, how come that guy didn't get it the previous point or the point that's coming next? So, so what, how do you fix that? You, you got to just keep instilling to the refs. This is the rule and this is how it's interpreted. Call mm-hmm. it this way. And that, like this weekend, when I talk to the refs, I always tell them, if you go into a play, a, a player, and you have to think about it, mm-hmm. then that's not... A major. A major is this. This is how it's interpreted. And that's what just has to be instilled into the, to the refs. And it's difficult. It really is, man. How do you address... I mean, I know this is going to be a touchy subject. Edmonton Impact is owned by a owner of the league, which is not uncommon. This has happened in the history of paintball since day one. There's always been someone within the industry also owning or involved in a team. Right. So this isn't uncommon. But... Also, as an industry member yourself, as a father to a team member, uh, how do you take on the argument that Edmonton Impact is getting special treatment? And I've, just, heard, it, I've heard you deal yeah. with this argument from players, <laughs> from team owners, from it's, everyone. It's, it's fun. What, what can you do to, I, I don't to know. Like, explain I, it to I them? think about when Dave ran the PSP, everyone thought Iron Man were getting mm-hmm. all the favoritism. But they weren't winning all the tournaments. Right now, Impact is winning. But... Before the NXL, mm-hmm. Impact was winning. So they were they win in the millennium. They have nothing to do with. They're a great team. So players feel like these guys are getting favoritism. Well, Randy's an owner in the NXL. Like Houston Heat is a great team. Are they getting favorable calls? I think after Vegas, after the World Cup last year, like mm-hmm. they're all getting penalties. But it's 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 very difficult because like you said, Paintball has always been owned by somebody. Mm. The PSP, the, the MPPL were all owned by different owners. Mm. Ran it going with Aftershock. Jerry Braun owned with New York, you know the New York guys. It's just it's it's a difficult thing. And how do you fix that? I don't know. I don't know until we can get somebody to come in with tons of money right. and say we're the owners and here's a couple million dollars. I don't know what else to do. Right. And it and it's sad because it takes away from that they're a good team mm-hmm. and they just proved it when they went to the millennium so going over the millennium isn't isn't mm-hmm. easy to win because their refs interpret the rules that's another thing too it's like how do you get the rules together worldwide and it's close it really is but it's the millennium and the nxl and, and there's and, a difference in the ecosystem they, they really need limited paint to keep the team sustainable right. and, and so on but back to the point of impact and the officiating and, and the consistency what you know, you guys have added replay, which is great. You know, we, there was multiple times during the webcast we had to stop, help the NXL officials run the replay system, right. find the call, and they've adjusted multiple calls, right. including penalties, including how many players they start with the next point, uh, including not calling a penalty. And it was an improvement, a big improvement. It's sure. it's not perfect yet. What will the NXL do? What's the next step to continue to improve consistency? Again, it's, you got to... The CJ and the crew will go and look at the replay. Jason Trozen, they'll all go back and look at the games and say, hey, mm-hmm. this call shouldn't happen this way. This call shouldn't happen this way. And th- again, that's the communication to interpret. This is the rule. This is the penalty for this play. And this happens. And that's what you have to keep pounding into the refs, just like the NFL does. Like You'll watch some games this year. 
The NFL will come out and say, hey, this call should have went this way. And that's the same way what, what the NXL has to do. They have to go back and review some of this because to review all of it, it's going to be impossible. But they're going to review a lot of it, I'm sure. And just figure out this is the rule. This is how it should be called. And that's how you got to go. And that's hopefully, not hopefully, it will happen. Mm -hmm. it, you'll see it get gradually better. And listen, the NXL is now what? Two and a half years old. Mm -hmm. So I think it's come a long way. Last year we came from the largest paintball tournament event tournament mm -hmm. ever, over 400 teams. So the NXL is doing something right, and so is paintball, and that's good. So it's a positive sign. It's Absolutely, it's it's very interesting this year going to all the regional fields and the local fields in Texas, seeing that uptick in paintball. You're starting to see more fields being built in Texas, which is amazing. I haven't seen that in a decade. You start yeah. to see more involvement in the middle tier and and higher end tier of the game meaning you know your player goes and rents a paintball gun and buys a couple you know paintballs and plays now you're starting to see a lot more involvement what's the next level after that what's the second and third time that's they play? that's how i got into paintball when yeah. i first played i said what are those guys using over there what are they wearing what are they shooting and that's that's what's happening so we need that to continue for paintball to grow we need everyone to be healthy and this whole industry because if the industry's healthy the sponsors are healthy, the teams are healthy, and I don't care who you're sponsored by, keep playing paintball. That's what we need. We need people to play paintball to, for this to continue to grow. USXBL, you mentioned it a few times. What's going on? Okay, so this weekend we have our South Central event to kick off. So we started some regions. We moved into Missouri, Nebraska, no, I'm sorry, Kansas. I said this last weekend. We're going to some regions where paintball is a little weak. There's teams there, but they just don't have enough structured leagues. So we're going to go in and try to build some areas and try to get these these little regions stronger. Because well, Texas, we started five years ago. The first tournament that we did, I think we had 22 teams. So this weekend, we're going to have 61 teams, and they're all X-Ball and five-man. So it takes time to build build these leagues and build these, these divisions because we have D5, then they move up to D4, then they move up to D3. So D4 X-Ball this weekend, I think it's 22 teams. Where when we started D4 X-Ball two years ago, we had like six the first time. So it takes time, but the strength of the regionals across the United States and the world is how the National X-Ball League is going to continue to get bigger if the regionals are healthy. So Texas this weekend, 61 teams from all over that Texas, Louisiana, Oklahoma, they're coming from all over the place. And, and I don't know if you've ever been, you live in Texas, but try to drive around Texas. It's not fun. <laughs> Just to get from Lubbock. Mm -hmm. To San Antonio is you would think it's like three hours, but it's probably seven hours. So yeah, it's just <laughs> it's four. The guys from the, yeah, the guys from the valley. It, it, but you see what I'm saying? It's just yeah. a, it's a it's a long drive. And I don't know track. how they do it. So Texas is huge. The, uh, uh, and, and with the USXBL, we're going to send to World Cup this year, and we did it last year. They'll be between the Great Plains region that we started. In South Central, mm -hmm. we're going to send over eight teams to World Cup, winning in D3. So the winners win overall prizes, entry, and free cases of paint as well. So they're playing to win prizes per event. There's cash at each event. This weekend, D3 will win $1,700 cash, and then that will put them in the running for that overall. And that's... Uh, that's Massive prizes. Yeah. So, again, the teams play. They win at the event, and then they go on to the next. It's uncanny to me. I, you know, you, we, we've got to be involved with a couple other sports like lacrosse and, and some other, like soccer and jujitsu and so on. At a regional level, for us to be giving prizes away, I, like like I that know. level, Kills me. in our industry, and I know some people are like, well, yeah, we should get prizes. We're paying so much money. Well, the reality is, if you look at the amount of money leagues spend to set these events up, to oh, bring man. in refs, to bring in food, to bring in the venue and so on, and the promotion to get it to where it is, the fact that we give away we USXBL and and all the paintball leagues yeah. guns and entries is just remarkable. That doesn't happen in other sports, <coughs> not no. at the Division Four and Five level where they. But if you don't do it sport. now, they'll they'll Absolutely. try to hang you. Oh, so yeah. it's an expectation now as well. And it's, it's interesting and if you it, go and look at soccer, for example, right? You you're lucky if you get a medal. <laughs> so like when I started to play, we didn't play yeah. for the prizes. Yeah. We played to say we were better than you, and that's. Yeah. I think what teams have forgotten, and and they not they, to take it away. I mean, not it's to take really it away. Awesome. The, the prizes are great, great, but when teams stop, yeah, forgetting they, if they don't concentrate on this, they'll start winning more. Right. If they if because they want to win. Some teams just show up to these events, 
I'm not going to name them, but they put a smile on my face because some of them just go, hey, this is our first practice. I said, so you flew out here, this is your first practice, and then you went 0-4, so why? <laughs> <laughs> and this has been going on forever, but yeah. teams love it. Yeah, they have a good time. They have a good time. And that, for some people, they're there to win. Some people, they're, they, I think they're all there to win, but some are there to win a little bit more yeah. than others. And I think once they start winning, winning breeds more winning. Yeah, I, can, I couldn't recommend it more. USXPLs have been in the Texas heritage of paintball for so long. Some of the best events ever run. And, and look, when we started the league six years ago, 2010, seven years ago. I wow. just dominated that league. It, yeah, you were a pain, dude. <laughs> you were a serious pain. Like, I wanted to throw you a Shout few out, times. Texas Phenomenon. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to, I'm like, oh my God, these guys are here again. I'm going to have to throw them. Hey, like but, any team, like any team that wins every single event. Yeah. Yeah. Edmonton and Mag. Yeah. Okay. They're a pain. <laughs> They're a pain. And we were just good. Man. You were good. And you, you guys did well. And and that's the thing. The team, and that's, D4 Superstar. <laughs> yeah. You were. <laughs> Wow, you're bringing back good memories. Oh, those are good times. But it takes time, and you build it up, and it's the same thing. Teams start, and they work their way, and as yeah. they win, yeah. then they then you'll hear, oh, that team's in D2. They're just sandbagging. They're, they're winning everything well. Beat them. The yeah. Beat them. Let's wrap it up with a little bit of hype for NXL Texas opening, happening May 5th through the 7th. We're about four weeks away from when it really starts to build up. Let's talk about the Tier 1 teams. Dynasty, Edmonton Impact, AC Dallas, and Axe Factory. Mm. You know, you got a couple Tier 2 teams that really have a shot. You know, obviously, I mean, all the Tier 2 teams. Damage, Infamous, Russian Legion, Heat. In in this echelon of upper-end teams, yep. who would you pick to move your chips onto for Texas Open? Well, let's talk about them. Whew. And you can't pick Impact because you're biased. No, I'm not going to pick Impact. <laughs> Dynasty, look, Dynasty's the, the team to beat yeah. because they just won Vegas. So sure. the, these guys all have to go through Dynasty. Now they've got the bullseye on their back. Dynasty so. has two people in the top 10 kill count. Ryan Greenspan, Alex Rodriguez, you know, continuing to perform. They have a heritage in, in the Blue Dragon team that's just unknown. Like, no, there is no other team like them. Nothing. They're the most winningest. Yep. Of course, they're going to be a threat. Uh, listen, you've got X Factor, who, who I think they won the Winter Classic. They came into Vegas. They played great. They're just a few tweaks from going on a run themselves. They're they're right there. Mm -hmm. AC Dallas, they're playing at home. They're playing in Texas. So uh, look, when you're at home, sometimes that's good and sometimes that's bad. Mm -hmm. When you're at home, now the pressure's on you to perform f for all your friends and family. Well, I think these teams like X Factor, AC, Houston Heat, that are playing in Texas, they need to just focus on playing and not what's surrounding them. So look for X Factor to be tough and, and angry coming into uh, into Dallas. And like my little sleeper team here and looking at all this group. Uh, tier, tier two teams, Which who's gonna make it in? Tier two teams. Damage, infamous, Russian Legion, Heat. You know, Heat really struggled. And that's a team that <clears throat> had a lot of buildup, had a lot of new new faces, but is that a, is that the reason why they had a hard first? A, a perfect example. You've got superstars on that team mixed with new guys, and they just haven't gelled yet. They will gel, and they will become a problem, and they will go on a, on a, a run. And one of these, they will, because it takes time, and that's that's what, what I want people to understand is that you could have like Houston Heat has a superstar team. Mm -hmm. Some of the best players in paintball are on that team, but they got to mix and they have the mm -hmm. chemistry has to be right now. I'll have to agree and be on the same page. That hasn't clicked yet. It will. Russian Legion are just, they just keep getting better each event. The young players are, are starting to get to that level they need to get to. They're just not there yet, but they will. They'll crack in and get that win soon enough. Infamous. Wait, before we go back, I still need you to pick one of the tier one teams who's going to win. Who's your bet? The tier two teams, who's going to win the event or just yeah. get out of that bracket? Tier one and tier two, who's going to win the event? Oof. Ooh, man, you're putting me on the hot seat here, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, it happens every time. This well, is the Steve Rabikoff paintball fan hat. You can't you can't align yourself with it. All right, who's going to win? X Factor is going to be a, a real nightmare. X Factor. Yeah. I think this one's AC Dallas's. 
I, well, you, you didn't give me a chance to pick my second guys, right? <laughs> uh, listen, looking at this, Dynasty's the team to beat. You got to go through them. I'm, I'm not. I can't even talk about impacts. We're not going to talk about impacts. So X Factor and AC are right there, and the way AC performed, and I, I think that they'll come through. But X Factor is going to be pretty angry, and uh, they'll be a nightmare to deal with there. We'll see. But I'm excited going into to the NXL Dallas event at Texas Motor Speedway. If you haven't signed up, sign up, get your hotels, and get ready to roll. I want to thank our sponsors. Thank you, Steve Rabikoff, for letting us into your humble abode yeah, and having this awesome first look at I'll the show. I'll show you where some of the beatdowns were. <laughs> yeah, everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> pbswagbag.com. Get on that website, subscribe. It's awesome. You get to walk away with all sorts of cool swag. gisports.com with a new LVL loader. MyFanWagon.com. But you can win this. You can win. The weekend's so, USXBL. Yes, this weekend, USXBL, April 1st and 2nd. The USXBL is doing the first divisional fantasy league in partnership with my fan wagon, the first place price. And this is all for free. All you have to do is sign up, make your picks for the Division Three bracket, and you can win an LVL loader. GoSports.com. Millions of hours of footage go on there. All the matches from the last event that we talked about are available in high HD format. And they have apps coming out soon. Want to announce that? Be sure to keep an eye out on their Facebook page for the new iOS and Android apps. And of course, thank you again to Steve. First look, that's a wrap. That's a wrap. Booyah. <laughs> Scuba Steve, number nine, with so many g g g gangster rhymes. <laughs> I'm putting that in. <laughs>